Hello, and welcome to part two of a discussion about the Orcoid race. When we last left off, we were discussing about what would happen if the Red Goblin tried to take on Kazgul Uthraka, and how that wouldn't have gone well. We will now tune in as Yuxin and I move on to the Orc clans, and how they affect Orc society. I hope you enjoy. And, and speaking of Uthraka, anyways... He's part of the uh, orc clan known as the Goth. But before we get into that, anyways, what are the orc clans? Some of you may be asking. And, uh, well, the orc clans are a massive group of orcs that all share an enduring philosophical viewpoint on green skin life. Philosophical? Ironically, yes. <laughs> if I may quote the great green skin thinker, Orchimedes, as he once postulated that <clears throat> Thinking is for gits, but everyone's a git, so you might as well think like some other gits. Which has come through the years to mean the clans. <laughs> That's probably the best way to describe it. But, uh, Yuxin, could you just real quickly, anyways, let people know, anyways, what's the difference between tribes, warbands, and clans? Okay, so tribes are basically a collection of orcs, generally from the same where you want to call it cesspit, whatever region, um, planet, <laughs> uh, or the same swamp. <laughs> yeah. Swamp. Fair enough. And then they basically become a tribe as they expand outwards. War bands is groups of those together and which can slowly build into army and then a wall. Clans on the other hand are, um, Basically, a collection of orcs with the same sort of thinking. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, Evil Sons, that clan is is made up of orcs that are speed freaks. Right. I mean, they could be from anywhere, but they they have this inherent mentality that fits with a particular clan. Right. So what you're saying is, like, for instance, a war band anyways... Once it gets big enough and it wants to become part of a wog, but its concepts, anyways, form along, anyways, these different like um, genetic clans. Yes, except for it isn't this. Uh, a war band can have multiple different clans in it. Oh, okay. So you're saying more along the lines of the tribes, then? No, the difference is is basically a clan is a genetic instinct of a group that they will follow. Right that philosophy instead of just you know this is my tribe you know it's kind of like these are the people that i fit in with instead so clans anyways they're 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 kind of like okay take a step back real quick anyways they're kind of like the leagues for the leagues of voton yeah kind of okay except for not nearly as organized <laughs> One of these, anyways, and probably the greatest out of all of them, or the largest amount, anyways, would be the golf, right? Well, they are considered the most blunt, dare I say, dense. <laughs> now, that's saying something for an orc. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Okay, their mentality of this is what they're going to use their head for. Put on a spiky helmet and hit somebody <laughs> with it. Right. Instead of actually... Rubbing those two brain cells that they have. <laughs> because they only if they were only granted words. <laughs> Me if I slice upwards instead of just headbutting the person, I may get better results. The fact uh, that they actually put a helmet on, anyways, is actually kind of surprising for a cough. <laughs> but anyways, uh, could you describe a little bit anyways who the goff are? Okay, the Goth are considered the biggest and meanest, and some say the most ferocious. I am not 100% sure on that because uh, I'd say it's up in there between them and snake bites, which we'll talk about in a little bit. They're definitely one of the more well known amongst uh, humans, but that's because one of the main reasons behind that is because of Guzgul Thraka, and since his clan is golf clan it's been more prevalent I should say in most of the conflicts that he's done i mean you've heard about you know stick ride and all those other ones that yes they were also involved with armageddon but they right. weren't the main footline troopers 
that'd be the goths they're the ones that disregard cutting and strategy and prefer just to surge forth in a mass of green i mean they're 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 the most predominant too right i mean and, it's kind of like when you think of an orc more likely than not anyways it's going to be a goth because there's so many more of them i'm not 100 percent sure on that but really? but well, part of that is because you know they are there's the biggest. So many clan. orcs out there. It's not like you're gonna be able to go. Uh, oh well, I think there's more of this than there is of that. Right. It's like okay, but you guys all line up. <laughs> I count a thousand one. Twenty nine. Well, yeah. there's more of that one. Wait, but, somebody but, moved. <laughs> but to put it into uh, um, orky stand standpoints, anyways, I think uh, Gazgrak. A goth knob probably put it best on on how the goth kind of think of each other or think of themselves amongst, anyways, the rest of the orcs. And oh, what what did he say again, Yuxin? We're the best. Think different, do you? Come and have a go, then, you runty little wimp. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's kind of the way they, they they kind of think. I mean, they're considered the biggest and best clan. Well, they think of themselves that way. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, the other thing, though, that I found anyways when I did some research on them anyways is that they like stick bombs. <laughs> In fact, they really love stick bombs. Now, um, real quick, can you tell us anyways what a stick bomb is? A stick bomb, it looks like a... On Terran 42, they had grenades that had basically a handle with explosive on the end. In World War II, these look pretty much exactly the same. It looks like a stick with a round explosive end to it, and that's their version of a grenade. <laughs> I, I believe the term, by the way, you were looking for Yuxin, anyways, on the World War II grenade. Uh, I believe the the um, Allies called them potato mashers, uh. and they were the uh, German version of the grenade. As opposed to the uh, Allies version, anyways, that looked like a, um, well, looked like a. Weren't they called a, pineapple grenades? Yeah, because they kind of look like a pineapple. They were also known as frag grenades. But anyways, okay, I thought stick bombs, anyways, they instead of like a grenade, anyways, where you toss it and it's got a timer, it's like literally you hurl it at something, anyways, and when it hits it, it blows up. Is that true, that's or is that more? That's probably more accurate. <laughs> It's gonna sounds right too for the orcs, which which also makes it significantly comical, anyways. If one of these orcs, which if I recall right, anyways, they like to tuck them in their boots <laughs> for safekeeping. If one of them trips and falls, anyways, it hits the ground, then boom. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they also do have their specialist tank busters, where one of their weapons is basically a rocket explosive on the end. Of a long stick, right? Oh, called okay, so a rocket what, hammer. What's the I thing, believe. anyways? That they they like slap on the tanks, anyways, and they tootle off, and then it blows up. Oh, the thing looks like a manhole cover. Yeah, what are they called tank buster bombs. <laughs> they called tank oh, buster bombs. Those ones are bombs. called tank hammers. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, so much better. The tank hammer. Like, what is it? It's a rocket on a pole. <laughs> um, okay, so we, we do have to move on here because we are kind of running out of time. But I do have to state something because obviously, as you know, we're kind of following the same pattern that we normally do anyways, where next week we're going to talk about notable characters. Right, Yuxin? Right. And one, one character in particular that is a goth uh, we won't be talking about. Yeah, Gazgul. And 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 you may be asking, anyways, why are we talking about Casgul? Well, Yuxin, why aren't we talking about Casgul? Because in the future we will be talking about Armageddon, and since he's pretty much involved in all of them except for I think the first one. Yes, the uh, the first one, um, uh, the first uh, War first of Armageddon, one was was... demon related, right? Yeah, it was Angron. Anyways, was trying to conquer the planet. Yeah. And his world eater uh, space legions. And uh, after that, when the rest of them were, I believe, Gasgul's fault. Pretty much, yeah. And so, uh, him and maybe even possibly Orchimedes, for that matter, 
or do we have them <laughs> next week? Um, no, no, we we might mention Orchimedes just simply because. It, well, he it's is weird that we actually in one of them. You know, <laughs> he was in the uh, uh, second one. I think he's still around, though. I think he's still helping out uh, um, Uthraka. Well, yes, but, you'd have to be because the Sassarone don't even know what he looks like. <laughs> Just, just the fact, anyways, that there is a philosophical orc out there, anyways, just kind of cracks me up. We, we, we might have to get him on the show. <laughs> I, I don't know. We might have to sneak down there, and snag him, anyways, and bring him back, anyways, to, so he can discuss some of his philosophy with us. <laughs> anyways, I digress. Uh, but yeah, that's that's why we're not talking about Uthraka next week. We're, we're going to be doing actually like a whole month on Armageddon. So we're obviously going to be talking about Uthraka and we'll be talking about Commissar Yarek and the Space Wolves. And it's going to be like the whole thing. But we do have to carry on with this box anyways. And we have probably my favorite clan of orcs. And that would be the Freebooters. Which, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, Okay. So I got I do have to ask this question to you, uh, in anyways, because I mean, technically the freebooters are a clan, but are they really? Yes, technically. Cause I mean, most of the clans that we've been talking about are like most of the clans we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, have been like, or we'll be talking like about. a sub clan. Right. So it's kind of like, you know, how you have the evil sons and you have the speed freaks. Well, the speed freaks aren't necessarily, Exclusive to the evil sons, but right. they are considered a subculture slash clan. Right. So freebooters fits in the same sort of area. Right. And it, all you need to know, anyways, about the freebooters is this. Um, excuse me, I'm saying. <clears throat> uh, w- w- would you like to join me on this, anyways, Yuxin? <laughs> okay. <Maybe. clears throat> Yo ho yo yo, 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 pirates like, like for me. me. Wow, we're, we're terrible at that. <laughs> give me a bottle of rum and a I don't know. Speak I up, me hearties, yo ho. Yes, the freebooters are pirates. I mean, straight up, that's what they are. A freebooter is a piratical orc who exists on the fringe of orc culture. Freebooters are green skinned bandits and sell swords belonging to no specific tribe or clan. We kind of <laughs> talked about that earlier, but <laughs> they kind of are one. But who, who will be willing to work with any tribe is well, stand against any other if the price is right. They're orcs. Yeah, well, yes, they're orcs. They're pirates. I mean, <laughs> I think uh, Captain Gorgal Ed Kicker said it best. <clears throat> Oi! Listen to me when I was talking to you. We's going to get their ship. We's going to smash it up and kill anything that gets in our way. And then we's going to get back to her on our boat and go home. That'll show them. Do you lot of Umi runs understand that? Hmm, good. Now, with me, Warg! But yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're, they are... When, okay, so most people, I think, anyways, when they picture pirates, they think of the golden age of piracy. That was when, well, when was that, Yuxin? In turn 42, uh, that was, I want to say, the 1600s? Into the 1700s? Eh, uh, somewhere around there. They were using muskets around that time. Yeah, yeah. And large galleys and yeah, yeah. That was kind of considered the golden age of piracy in Terran 42. And it was, you know, it's where you had like Blackbeard and, you know, those guys. When you picture those guys anyways, just make that person green. (laughs) And give them about another 150 pounds of solid muscle. (laughs) Oh, and don't forget to give them the squig, uh, (laughs) the squig known as a mimic. Which is a squig that's like a parrot <laughs> that mimics anything anybody says. And then you have a free Buddha. I mean, that's what they are, right? I mean, they, generally, they even have the, the pirate hat. And the peg leg. <laughs> well, sometimes. 
<laughs> other times anyways they actually have a mechanical leg but still man and also anyways isn't it like uh oh, what are they called flash kits yeah yeah flash kits are usually also uh, freebooters and and so you can remind the listeners anyways what's a flash kit there you uh flash kits are actually probably one of the uh least liked out of the uh, yeah. different types of forces of orcs, mainly because they like to show off all their stuff and, you know... They're more shooty than choppy. They, yeah, they're more... Let's put it this way. They're despised generally for being self-important show-offs. <laughs> like a pirate. <laughs> With too much snaz and daca for their own good. <laughs> so... So keep in mind, we, 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 we've, we've mentioned before anyways that the only thing that an orc really likes or loves anyways is getting into a scrap, right? Right. His favorite thing is crumping. But at the same time anyways, orcs also like other things. Shiny things. Teeth. <laughs> Teeth is one of their favorite things. That's, that's, that's uh, orcs currency, which yeah. is actually teeth. And... The freebooters are no different, anyways. But they're 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 like I said, like we said before, anyways. They're pirates. So one of the things they love doing, anyways, is raiding places, anyways, to gather booty or loot. Um, it's also they're one of the few clans, anyways, that will work with humans because they're they're looking for you know gold and booty and all that stuff. Or it's only like I guess. What's that? Well, we've technically also identified them as culture, so. Yeah. So, I do have one question, though, before we move on, anyways. And I do like these guys. And, and by the way, next week, anyways, we will have a notable character, anyways, that is a freebooter. And he's one of my favorites. But um, we do have to kind of go into, because there are different types of pirates in the Milky Way system. I mean, when you think of pirates, there's, like, really actually kind of three different subsects of them, right? Yuxin? Like. Three or four. Okay, so so when you think of the pirates of the Milky Way system, what are the ones that you think of? Okay, so the three ones that pop off generally at the top of my head is your Drukari Raiders, uh, Eldari yeah. Corsairs, and the Freebooters. Oh. What about the Rogue Traders? The Rogue Traders, I feel they're more like privateers than they are. For those who don't know what privateers are, they're contracted pirates yeah basically <laughs> it's like okay they're pirates but they're allowed to <laughs> by the imperium <laughs> by the imperium every other race in the milky way system thinks of them as pirates but the imperium doesn't <laughs> yeah. so what would you say anyways is is probably the huge difference and between Eldar. um the Eldar pirates, the human pirates, and then the orc pirates. Because I'm trying to think of if, if there are even any other types of pirates. And, well, obviously, I don't think the little well, the Tyranids don't have one. I mean, the closest you probably got with a Votan is, uh, what 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 league was it again anyways? that, But they're, but they're not really pirates. They're, they're more of like uh, um, merchants. Right. And then... The Tau don't. The the Tau don't, yeah. And then I don't think the Necrons do either. Why would they have pirates? <laughs> Cause they... Okay, actually, no, that's not true. There is one <laughs> Necron pirate. <laughs> and that would be <laughs> Trezine the Infinite. <laughs> and I wouldn't even really label him as a pirate. I would just say he's a thief. <laughs> but uh, a does... pirate would require having a large crew. He does do that sometimes. So, so okay, I would say anyways, he's probably the only thing that you can come close to for the Necrons anyways is being piratical. <laughs> right. And, so you know, Sometimes it works. But yeah, anyways, so of the three anyways, of the Eldar races, the free booters, and the rogue traders anyways, how would you differ, uh, differenti differentiate? That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Yuxin. How would you do that? So... I don't know much about the Corsairs, Feldari Corsairs, as much as uh, 
the others, but one of the main differences with the Drukari Raiders is obviously the way that they approach things is much more cruel. And probably more sophisticated. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> um, like we mentioned, the Rogue Traders are more like privateers. Yeah. So they may do trading, but they also obviously do piracy, which... But so for them, it's more of a business <laughs> right. instead of a, like, occupation. It's more of just a business, which I know occupation and business are pretty much the same thing. But <laughs> you get the gist. Yeah, no, no, I hear, I hear you. And what about the freebooters? Uh, the freebooters are just, it's what they want to do. It's not really a <laughs> thought process much past that. Yeah, so kind it's of, almost yeah. like some of these things can just be on a whim. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, this thing looks interesting. Okay, sure. <laughs> I just so so to me, anyways, the difference is is that, like you said, anyways, rogue traders are more like privateers, which to me, anyways, is just laughable in the Milky Way system. It's like <laughs> the privateers. Well, no, they're pirates. Well, yeah, but the Imperium's okay with them. Well, yeah, but nobody else is. <laughs> The Drakari Raiders, on the other hand, they're, to me anyways, they, uh, well, obviously, other than the fact, anyways, they're more technologically advanced. They, they're more like slave traders. Yeah. If that makes sense, anyways. When slave they go raid. And, yeah. Following other Drakari things in general, they are very akin to liking pain and torture for people. Yeah. So. I mean, out of these, these these three groups of pirates, anyways, they're obviously, anyways, my least favorite because they're just so dark. It's just, <laughs> don't get me wrong. The freebooters, anyways, they'll broadside a battle or a transport ship and then take everybody's stuff and kill a bunch of them and then take off. But they're pirates. I mean, that's <laughs> what they do. The Drakari, on the other hand, anyways, they did the same thing, except for they would take everybody they didn't kill, anyways, as prisoners, and then they would just slowly kill them, anyways, just for their enjoyment. Yeah. That's the difference. I mean, I'm personally not a big fan of the Drukari. Quite frankly, anyways, yeah. if Umkulu, anyways, decided to wipe them from existence, anyways, of the Milky Way, I'd be okay with that. But <laughs> that's, that's just me. I know. There are people out there that actually do like these emo gits. But <laughs> anyways, out of the three, though, uh, obviously my favorite is the freebooters. Although rogue traders, anyways, are very interesting, too. Now, we do have to move on from this. Yes. Anyway. And last week, you did discuss, anyways, about the beast snaggers. Now, now, what clan, anyways, is, is more predominantly beast snagger than anything else? Well, if you want to know about a clan that... Feels the initiation process is to be bitten by a poisonous snake, and then to show your resilience is to suck out the poison yourself. <laughs> that would be the snake bites. Okay. That's why they're called the snake bites. <laughs> they're also they are wild boys. <laughs> they are well, the quote by Grod, the snake bite runt herd. Live off the land. Go to find war. Kill what comes close. The old ways are best. They are like just above wild boys. I mean, th their thought process is, is or okay, feral war. we will accept technology if we have to. But if we don't have to, we'd prefer not to. So they would like look at one of the chain axes that it works using and they go, why are you using that? I mean, it'll get bits of <laughs> humi in it, and it'll jam up, and it'll run out of fuel. When that club, rubber chopper. <laughs> when you grab just the club, it will bash somebody in. No matter how many times it'll work, it won't run out of gas. Okay, reason, so one of the reasons why I say that Goffs might not be considered the most ferocious is because these guys, one of the things about beast snaggers is they're known as being just, well, basically like beasts they are okay you could take a limb off and they i got would. a question for you but go go ahead continue with your point okay they are basically the tough as nails just yeah it's hard to explain it right now 
Well, um, they're, they're, they're like the, uh, for Terran 42, they're like the Apache as opposed to the um, United States Cavalry, right? Yeah, except for in comparison, their like skin would be like tanned, almost elephant hide in comparison to normal orc yeah. hide, which is still pretty thick. So but, it's like it, it's like the Milky Way system, anyways, of Warhammer, forty k. It's just like put it on steroids. <laughs> yeah, because they also think it's like okay, what's the point of building houses when really it'll just help you be stronger to weather it all out? I mean, <laughs> this yeah. is their viewpoint. They also don't feel that you know you need to paint anything garishly. They figure the best coloring is like if something's been a while to rust or to become muddy or something like that they're also yeah. one of the few orc clans that actually has tattoos and well the tattoos anyways are supposed to help them but okay first off anyways the things they ride in a battle are the squig hogs right yeah generally they are the ones that you'll see with squig hogs hang on a second you see so they ride squig hogs in the battle, yes? Yes. And aren't squig hogs red? Yes. <laughs> so do they move faster because <laughs> the, the snake bites think that they're fast because they're red? Except for it isn't a paint job. So well, it doesn't need to be a paint job, it just needs to be red. Then probably. Okay, so in fact it would be forever because you know it won't really come off. So, to me, anyways, I just kind of picture this, anyways, as, as a human trying to actually train a squig hog, which, by the way, is that thought process is kind of ridiculous. But him, anyways, just like riding it around, anyways, is like it doesn't seem like it's going that fast. And then he sees one of these snake bites just go zipping by him on a snake hog or a, yeah. a squig hog. And it's like, oh, yeah, the whole red thing. <laughs> so. But Another I, thing. Okay, real quick though, I do have a question for you. Are all beast snaggas snake bites? No. It's no. just that they're more predominantly found in snake bites because of the fact the snake bite culture is basically the old way is the best way. Okay. Which is so, basically what the beast snaggas feeling is. Right. Snake bites, though, are the ones that are more prominent in when it comes to breeding different types of squigs. They are more commonly known to use to first strike by using grots and squig first to attack so that they have enough time for their boys to actually get in. So they actually have some tactics other than just, we'll try to roll over everything. Right. I, I do have a question. You just mentioned anyways that they, they are like, you think anyways, they're kind of like the toughest of all the orc boys. Are they also the biggest? Predominantly. No. They are, I find them probably to be the most toughest and maybe at the same level as ferociousness as goths. The goths are considered to be, in general, bigger. Okay. Well, so I mean, one of the things that's funny big. is the fact that it's been common to know that snake bites can tend to be grumpy. <laughs> grumpy? Yes, <laughs> grumpy. I thought all orcs were kind of grumpy. Okay, so real quick before we move on to our last clan, anyways, um, just out of curiosity, anyways, where do you find the most snake bites in the galaxy? I don't know. I mean, you would think that they they, they kind of can conglomerate in a particular area. You I know, mean, that about most of them, but like I said, the thing is, is that since clans aren't attributed to a specific tribe, I mean, you could have probably like. Out of 100 orcs, you have three clan, different clans in there. They're all from the same tribe. So it's... it's. Well, no, 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 no. Hang, hang on a second anyways. I thought that the tribes anyways, predominantly anyways, whatever tribe you're talking about anyways, predominantly went with one of these clans. It wasn't like the tribe itself anyways was... It's got a bunch of different ones anyways. So when we join up with a war band anyways, they kind of go their separate ways. I thought it was more along the lines anyways that they just kind of moved to whatever, you know, clan they were affiliated with genetically. Hello? Uh. <laughs> well, while Euxin is kind of looking this up and trying to figure this out, 
I do have another question for you anyways, and, and it kind of predominates anyways with the last question that I had. And that was, uh, we're the most snake bites in the galaxy. Okay, so if you look at the lion, Lionel Johnson anyways, where he landed anyways, I mean, he grew up, it was, it kind of developed his character because he grew up in this forest where there's all these horrible monsters and he had to survive there. I was kind of wondering anyways that the snake bites anyways have the same concept where they kind of pop up anyways. You have the biggest, baddest beasts that kind of live there. And I was just kind of wondering anyways if that's where they kind of generally pop up or if it's just random. Uh, as far as I can tell, it is random. Okay. Uh, is it random for most clans or is it? Yes, I think as far it, as I can tell, yes. So all clans. So be you a goth, uh, snake bite, a um, oh geez, uh, a free boot. Well, a free booter is a little different. Uh, <laughs> uh, a death skull, an evil sun, uh, <laughs> bad moons. It doesn't really matter where you pop up. It's just kind of. Your genetic thinking, anyways, just kind of shifts you one way or the other? Yeah, uh, because, first of all, clans mm -hmm. stretch throughout all of Orc society, right, across the galaxy, regardless of boundaries such as tribal allegiance. They are most closely analogous to societal castes being no way organized or centralized. An Orc instinctively knows what clan he belongs to. There is no conscious choice, rather a commonality of instinctive inclinations outlooks and philosophies not dissimilar to spontaneous knowledge of odd boys so the concept is is that it's just genetically designed into them yes and so technically you can have more than one different type of clan in a tribe okay that's weird you would think yeah. anyways that well no, no no i'm just saying it's weird because yeah. you would think that environment would have something to do with it but it doesn't not as far as I've been able to find. <laughs> in the tombs that you just, or tomes, tomes that you just looked up. Yeah. yeah. In the tombs I've looked up. Well, yeah, those two. But <laughs> Well, this has been fun, but we've got one last clan we do have to get to. And that would be the Blood Axes. Now, we kind of talked about them last week, right, Yixon? A little bit? Right. Uh, mainly because we talked about the commandos. Blood axes kind of think better than most orcs. I mean, you kind of described anyways, <laughs> the goth anyways, trying to rub two brain cells together. And I joked about that's all the brain cells they had. Well, apparently the blood axes got four brain cells. <laughs> to put it simply anyways, by Corporal Snagbrat of the Dreadblade Commandos. <clears throat> Us blood axes have learned a lot from the homies. How best to kill them, for example. I mean, that kind of puts it into perspective of how the blood axes think. They kind of think ahead. They're they're, they're weird for orcs. And I mean, they attempt to make camouflage on their vehicles. <laughs> Mind you, their camouflage is not in the sense camouflage. What do you mean? Well... They put like goddish stripe coloring on a gargant, thinking that that will hide it, make it more sneaky. So a multi storied <laughs> mechanized machine will put stripes on it, make it sneaky. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it might make it look a little different. <laughs> I mean, they'd probably be better, anyways, if they like painted it, anyways, like gray. So it looked like a mountain and then slowly <laughs> shuffled it forward. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that mountain's walking. What? No, it's not. It keeps getting closer. We haven't moved. You're just seeing yeah, things. You right? that thud, right? <laughs> That's where the ground starts shaking. <laughs> 15 minutes later, it's the commissar going, you know what? I think you're right. That mountain <laughs> is moving towards us. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh, uh, like how one person apparently saw a foot, 50 foot stompa daubed in red and blue tiger stripes oh jeez. 
So like I said, four brain cells as opposed to two. <laughs> but... Oh, Can by we... the way, do you want to explain the whole purple sneaky thing? Oh, I, I will here in a second, but I do have to give a brief description anyways of the blood axes real quick. So the Blood Axes are an orc clan that has actually been known to work alongside the forces of Imperium Man on occasion. The Blood Axes are held by other orc clans to be a bunch of untrustworthy gits. <laughs> they trade openly with the worlds of the Imperium, parley with the foe, and will eventually consider retreating from battle if faced with insurmountable odds. Perhaps once intended to make the Blood Axes natural leaders, these qualities have instead earned them the reputation among other green sins as little more than treacherous dogs. <laughs> so, ironically, the funny part about this is that in our culture, the smart ones are horrible and we despise them. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say about that. Uh, you were asking about purple? Yeah. Well, it's, it's actually fairly simple anyways, an orc, orc thought process. Have you ever seen a purple orc? Of course not. Well, then there you go. That's why they're sneaky. You can't see them. <laughs> it's, it is the weirdest logic ever. You're just kind of like, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Well, wait a minute. Another uh, thing that's interesting is they're, they're advanced enough that their uh, beast snaggas are generally more progressive. They will actually have gun wagons and half track trucks. Uh huh. But really? they power them by squigs. <laughs> of course they do. So it's that like... hold them along or run in huge <laughs> generator wheels. Drive yeah. motive power. They use their squigs as hamsters. <laughs> like a hamster wheel <laughs> that powers the truck. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> That is just insane. <laughs> and they also go to the trouble of breeding squigs whose leathery hides bear natural camouflage colors. Oh, that would work. Really and they well have apart. recorded, the Imperium has recorded everything from striped or spotted squigs to the rare and alarming Camellio squigs <laughs> of Grogabrog. <sighs> That they would work well, actually. For I the think that right. would be really scary, actually. Think about it for a second. A chameleon-like squig. Let's say it's like a face eater. No, no, no. <laughs> e even out of the middle of nowhere, this thing you just think. goes. Oh. <laughs> even worse, you can anyways. Think about it. A bomb squig. <laughs> well, except for bomb squigs are just generally squigs strapped with explosives. Well, yeah, no, I... Mm. Saying the same thing, but they paint them anyways in this camouflage. <laughs> so, oh, no, these are things that are supposedly bred to naturally have this camouflage. Oh, well, yeah, strap a bomb on that thing, anyways. Yeah, you know terrifying that would be all of a sudden, yeah. anyways. You just see this thing with teeth shows up, anyways, and then it goes boom. <laughs> and that's the last thing you saw. <laughs> Real quick, though. Okay, so we've, we've talked a lot about or culture. Which is always a funny thing to me, anyways. It's just orc culture is just like thumping something else. But the the blood axes are a little bit different, and they do work with the Imperium of Man. Why? Okay. But, well, it's it's bloody obvious. It's because they can use it to get into more fights. Hopefully, better fights <laughs> and bigger fights. I, I do agree with you, Yuxin, but could there perchance be a concept that the blood axes are actually smart enough that they could actually form their own empire? I know this is thinking really an orky, but do you think that, I mean, out of all of them, they're probably the smartest, right? Well, the smartest are the biggest orcs, generally. Right, but it seems like the blood axes, anyways, have a little bit more intelligence behind them. So, I mean, okay, so I, I, I will say this too, anyways. Uh, the Blood Axes were the first orcs that the Imperium Man ever came in contact with. So they've had more dealings with humans than any other orcs. Of course, on the other hand, it could just be them learning. I know that's very unorky too. 
learning how humans and Imperium actually operates. Yeah, well, I mean, it makes sense anyway. Militarily, yeah. tactics-wise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and quite frankly, anyways, it sounds like at some point or another, anyways, they were actually kind of more in charge of the orcs until the big party. <laughs> uh, the big party was everybody took a look at the blood axes and then they said, we don't like the way you tinkin. And then they all rose up and they beat the crap out of the blood axes, killing most of them. <laughs> So now the goth are in charge. Because <laughs> they're the biggest. Yeah. The, uh, meanest. <laughs> the concept anyways in orcs is always true. Might makes right. Exactly. It's that simple. <laughs> but and do you think the biggest orc is always the one you follow. Right. Exactly. So, but like I said before, anyways, do you think any ways that you could get an empire of orcs anyways based around the blood axes? They're the only ones I could think of anyways that you could actually do that with. Well, that we know of. Because these are just the the major specified clans. There's probably right. an innumerable amount of smaller types of clans. Right. And, and, and like, for instance, next week anyways, we're, when we go on notable characters, one of which anyways, the Beast, was considered actually incredibly intelligent. And his lieutenants anyways were very intelligent as well. In fact, I a don't lot think of people... they had a specific clan, did they? Mentioned. Um, they did. did they? Yeah, uh, the clan was called Crork. Oh, named after their predecessors of who knows how long ago. Uh, there's many arguments, anyways, that the beast himself, anyways, was actually a Crork. But Demi Crork. Yeah, yeah. It's like I said, anyways. It's an argument that we will get into next week. But, <laughs> I digress. Out of all the clans, anyways, at this point, anyways, that we've, we've, we've seen, we've kind of talked about, anyways, I think the Blood Axes, if any of them, anyways, could probably actually start an empire. And when I say empire, I don't mean anyways, like what the Goth think of the empire, which is just a well, great... There are right? technically already empires of orcs. Yeah, but they're not really empires. I mean, you're talking about a, a imperium style empire. Yes, that's what you're or, saying, right? Okay. Yeah, or or like for instance, uh, well, and, and I'm I'm saying anyways, not just like the imperium, but like for instance, like the leagues of Votan. Anyways, you have leagues, anyways, that that you know have a certain subspace, anyways, of place that they call their own, or the the Eldar, or even the Drukhari. Now we can't talk about the. Tyrannus, because definitely they definitely aren't, or the Tau. Tau would be another example, anyways, of an Imperium. But, anyways, <laughs> I'm kind of going down a rabbit trail here. Um, real, real quick before, before, okay, we we do have to talk about the da big raid before we're done. But before we're done, anyways, what is your favorite clan? Um. Well, it, it's hard to say. I kind of like the snake bites because of their mentality and how they're they're kind of like okay, they're kind of like the orc version of catechins. Let's put it that way. Wait, the, the, the catechins of um, the Imperium. You know the the jungle warriors. They're like yeah. I would have I would have put the puppets more like them, but. Who has more like them? The blood axes. No, you're just thinking about Sly Marbo. No, I'm thinking about, I mean, I mean blood axes are predominantly more commando. <laughs> or commandos than anything else. I mean, to me, anyways, they're like the Katashans, anyways, but they're orcs, which means they're far worse. Anyway. But, and who did you think the, the Katashans were like? The snake bites are similar in the sort of aspects of. Oh, okay, I can see that. Yeah, I, I disagree with you, but I can see it. <laughs> um, so I like their mentality and how they're basically very simple. They do actually use tactics that, unlike the goth, who are just like we're just going to try to run over everything. They at, least the acknowledge enough, they at least acknowledge enough that there's like, okay, if we rush in there, 
if, if the boys rush in there first, they're more likely going to be wiped out. But if we send all these massive amounts of vicious creatures first, we'll probably be able to stick in there. <laughs> okay. Because if they have this monstrous squigoth running towards them, I'm pretty sure a few boys are going to be able to get in behind that squigoth and actually do something. <laughs> I think they're going to be more worried about that thing than the boys. The boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you thinking snake biters? But I also like the fact that the blacks is are the what actually use more uh, progressive tactics. The who? Blood oh, axes. Blood axes. I think you said the blacks is. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> it's blood a axes. Uh, yeah. So you think it probably more of the snake biters? Probably your favorite. Yeah. I like all of them, but. Yeah, yeah. Probably my least favorite, actually, is the golf. Yeah, well, you know, and the funny part about that is, is that they're the most orky. <laughs> Out well, of all I the mean, ones that we've talked about. <laughs> I mean, the snake bites, let's face it. Well, they're more like feral orcs <laughs> than actual orcs. I, I, I don't know. To to me, the, the one I actually like the most, anyways, is 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 quite frankly the freebooters, and I know they're not technically a clan; it's more of a culture. But still, just just the concept, anyways. Of <laughs> I could see this or anyway. pirates. <laughs> this 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 giant space Hulk, anyways, floating towards <laughs> this this battleship, and. <laughs> The captain, anyways, he's got it himself up on the periscope, anyways, and he's got like a sword or a chop in one hand, <laughs> and he's holding on to it, and he's like, Avashi! I mean, <laughs> we gotta be crumping ya, you know? <laughs> Just, to me, Give us like, your loot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before I stomp your head in, fire the broadsides. <laughs> yeah, you know. Or just it's ram me. it through. <laughs> it's just, I, I, yeah. I just find him probably the most entertaining. But we have talked about a lot of these different clans anyways. And why I said we needed to talk about the big raid is because it actually has to do with a couple of the clans that we oh, talked wait, about. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Are we going to talk about what would orc? life be without grots that's actually a good question um i i don't think it would work quite frankly i mean I we think it would go go ahead in a way it depends if you're including snotlings with grots if they weren't there then the building and the ecosystem would exist and then no it wouldn't uh, if this Stotling still existed, I think they would still be able to work, just not nearly as well. So, hang on. Your question was if there weren't other oracoids other than no, the orcs. No, no, no. Oh, I okay. said if there were no grots. Oh, okay. Um, if there were no grots, I think things would move slower. Yeah. And it wouldn't work as nearly as efficiently. I thought you were saying, anyways, that there were another orchids, in which case, or orcoids, in which case I'd say, well, no, it wouldn't work. The orcs yeah. never would be able to do anything because, I mean, their main source of subsistence, anyways, is the is, is the squids. Beginning. Yeah. Um, well, n not even just the beginning. And that's normal what they eat, the squigs. And. Uh, Orc rots. Or snotlings. Of course, they, they kind of eat everything that's smaller than them. <laughs> but, um, if you did have Grotz or Gretchen, and you just had the little snotling dudes, um, I th I think it would still work. Just yeah. Some of the, uh, well, and, and here's the reason why is because the, there have been known documented aspects, anyways, of where orcs have conquered people, and then they use them as slaves. And the way that they use them anyways is like the same way that they would use Gretchen or Grot. Yeah. So and I think it would still work. It's just, I don't think it would. First off, I don't think it would be nearly as funny. And secondly, it's just, 
I think it would like like I said before, I think it would be slower. Yeah. Well, another thing is is the fact that like I've mentioned before, one of the two main occupations that you'll see Gratz and Gretchen Gretchen in, they're not militant, are uh the build stuff. Orderlies. In other words, assistance to the pain docs, or the doctors, spelled with a K. Uh, of course. And as assistance to mech boys. Their roles there is as is because of their diminutive size, they're able to get into certain places to actually do stuff. Right. So things would be, I mean, they could dwarfs could still build the things. It's just they couldn't fine tune things as much because they're just too big. Which is a weird concept anyways for the orcs. Fine tuning something. <laughs> Finer tuning. Yeah, there you go. But like I said, anyways, I think anyways that if, if you didn't have the Gretchen or the Grotz, the ecosystem I think would still be fine. It would be, you you would just end up, first off anyways, you'd end up with orcs anyways that had to build stuff. Uh, like, like for instance, the, the you know, the like the settlement, which they wouldn't be very good at. And oh, so they, they might. It's not necessarily that they don't, though the snake bites won't carry the way, anyways. Right. Because, like I said, one of their viewpoints is, is why build a settlement when you can prove your worth by just weathering out whatever it is that comes. Right. And so, all, the other thing, though, so is they want to give a rip, anyways. Right. <laughs> And the other thing, though, is I think they'd be significantly more like Jerkari because they need that extra aspect anyways of stuff being built for them. So they they would, I think, drive more towards anyways a slave encampment more right. than they do now, which honestly, in my opinion, anyways, would make them significantly darker. I mean, the orcs are, the orcs are already kind of dark if you really want to look at them that way. Of course, um, this is in a very, very dark Milky Way, right? Yes. I mean, uh, this is this is Warhammer. I mean, it, it's incredibly dark to begin with, anyways. And you're taking something, anyways, that is entertainingly dark. I guess. I, I mean, that's probably the best way to describe the orcs is that they're, they're entertainingly dark. <laughs> I mean, they're. I mean, let's face it, they're horrible monsters that 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 murder people. I mean, that's what they do. And when you understand their society, anyways, no, no, no. They, they don't murder. Yeah, no, they kind of do. They, they, <laughs> they generally they just kill people. Murder means that the other person isn't expecting it. No, uh, you no know, murder normally is, is with a malicious intent. That's kind of the concept of murder. And yes, they and yes, I agree. Anyways, they don't murder people. They kill them, though. I mean, they kill them. So it's 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 still, anyways, you know. And and it's not because. And what makes them dark, though, is is it's not because it's just well, we're doing this anyways for the greater good of our people. No, it's because we think it's fun. Well, it's genetically ingrained into them, also. And it, yeah, and it's genetically ingrained into them. Which, which, like I said, if you want to look at the orcs, anyways, you can look at them very darkly. Yeah, and 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 if you are going to anyway, and if you threw in anyways that the concept that there were no Gretchen or Grotz, anyways, I think they would be significantly darker because because they would have more of a Drakari aspect, anyways, of the world. Now, Minus I, the the cruel yeah, country. Exactly. It would be more along the lines of when we conquer a place anyways, we're not killing everybody. What we're doing is we're we're capturing them, taking them over in ways and, we're, and making them more of a slave concept. Yeah. Which to me anyways is 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 far darker, especially when you, you look at how the orcs anyways treat their slaves. <laughs> treat them like orcs, which as we know anyways, orcs really don't feel pain. Yeah. But people do, but they still treat them like orcs. So it's just kind of like they hack off an arm of a person in any ways and then just kind of start laughing because they're just like, well, we'll just stitch it back on. <laughs> and no human anyways is going to look at an orc anyways and go, that's not how it works, you know? There's so, a funny thing that I heard by another chronicler out there uh -huh. who 
who has these two orcs talking to each other about philosophy. And one of the people is going, okay, so this person says that the most success you can have is when you can win without fighting. And then the other orcs just like, why? <laughs> like, okay, you have to take this into account. You know, when humies die, it's bad because they don't, you know, grow stronger. Mm -hmm. But when we do, we grow stronger. Oh, <laughs> didn't figure that out at all. <laughs> Which goes to prove my point anyways, that the orcs anyways, their philosophy is so Xenos to humans. They just, the concept of them doesn't even make a whole lot of sense. I mean, unless you look at them in a hysterical, humorous aspect. Of which we do. Yeah, because we're not human. But, you know, <laughs> we're not getting murdered by these people. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. We do have to end this. We, we are coming, we're coming pretty close anyways to where it's, dear God, they're going to come, Bob and Bill are going to come and thump us <laughs> if we don't stop. Okay. But we do well, have to talk about. Why don't you tell us about the brig raid? Oh, yes. yeah. That's where I was going. Well, the big raid well, uh, had to do with the blood axes of Grog. Grog. And they tell the story about the greatest commando attack ever, known as, like I said before, the big raid. It happened on the world of Vorsenar when Grog, Grog smashed into the edges of the Tau Empire. Now, real quick, you can, you can kind of agree with me on this anyways. The Tau <laughs> we've talked about the Imperium and the Orcs. The Tau and the Orcs really, they really don't mix. <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> Obviously not, because the Tau's viewpoint is, let's not have war and violence. Which, of course, you know, the Orcs' viewpoint is, let's have war and violence. So, <laughs> well, not only that, three statements here. <laughs> well, not only that, but the tower is significantly more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, yes, shooty, <laughs> as opposed to the orcs, which are more choppy. <laughs> hey, um, hey, orcs like to shoot a lot also, generally with a lot of noise. <laughs> yes, yes. Which, okay, real quick, before we carry on anyways, DACA. I mean, a lot of times anyways, that is like a war chant. For orcs, right? It's Daka, Daka, Daka. Yeah. What is Daka? <laughs> Daka is a term used for either attack, noisy weapon, shoot, or fight. So, really? Yep. <laughs> okay. I've always just thought of Daka anyways. It's just like... An orc, anyways, he's got guns, and when he starts shooting me, it, it, it would be like a human going bang, 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 bang. <laughs> well, <laughs> you shoot. Uh, so, but but it's not the same thing though, because Daka has a different concept. Okay, we'll we'll get into that next week. Remind me next week, anyways. We have to get into Daka. Okay. <laughs> but anyways. Okay. The log grog smashed in the edges of the Tau Empire. Freebooter raids on the Tau planet have been previously repulsed by the huge alien warship with more DACA than anything in the Orc fleet. Like I said before, anyways, we have to talk about DACA. But next week. Next week. We're running out of time here. Called the Corsula by the Tau and the big DACA ship by the orcs. It stalked the space lanes around Forsanar, annihilating anything that trespassed into the Tau Empire. The Course Law's only weakness was that it needed to use a huge orbital of docks around Forsanar to rearm and refuel, while Grog knocked the heads of his freebooter captains together trying to get a large enough fleet together to storm the Tau planet, a mob of blood-axe commandos 
came up with a more cunning plan. Well, <clears throat> sorry, cunning plan. <laughs> they would attack the Orville docks while the course law was away, wrecking the Tau station and denying the warship a place to repair itself or rearm. The commandos set out an eluded Tau transport ship using captured codes to approach the Vorsenar dockyard under the pretense of having been damaged in an orc raid and seeking safe harbor. The Tau were initially suspicious. Okay, I uh, just have to say, how smart were the Tau at this point? <laughs> Unless well, they were typing this out, which is amazingly intelligent for an orc to type all out, out saying, sorry, we're under distress, but seriously... More than likely, this was a Fox thing going on. Well, you have on one side this orc going, We've been damaged. We need to come in. Bitches. And the <laughs> other towel, and the towel on those goes, <laughs> Oh, yeah, this must be Fox. <coughs> <Sure. laughs> like you were saying, anyways, that's probably why they were suspicious. <laughs> Remember, anyways, the commandos are sneaky. <laughs> so it probably started out with help us <clears throat> please please sir can you help us <laughs> they probably got a grot <laughs> that's it you say this right or I thump you <laughs> you know kind of thing this is probably what happened but anyways <laughs> the Tau were initially suspicious <laughs> as rightfully they should, of the lone vessel limping into the void station. But every demand for identification was met with satisfactory response. And the idea that works of all people could undertake such a ruse was unthinkable to the Tau. I, I just had this few points. What's the code? Um, one, what two, does this three, mean? four. <laughs> Two dash line L thingy. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know. But apparently, they it, it seemed to work because it was a horrific surprise when the vacuum seals opened and the orc commandos poured out into the station. By the time the Tal had mustered to repel the invaders, the commandos had reached the void station's reactors. Smashing them into scrap, they set off a chain reaction, dooming the station, allowing Rog Grog to ransack Vorsenar and ultimately the entire sector. So, whatever their weird <laughs> distraction was, apparently it worked. You, you know what they did, right? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> they took this ship, right? And then they painted the whole thing purple. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're able to get in communications <laughs> to it. So it wasn't sneaking up. No, no, no. They painted the whole thing purple. Even like the communi communication box thing. <laughs> Make sure we paint everything purple. <laughs> That's the yeah. only way it's going to work. <laughs> they they would have just painted the calm purple because they want the outside to look like it's damaged. They don't want it to be invisible. Right, right. Good point. Good point. <laughs> well, folks, on that funny <laughs> anecdote, that is all the time we have for today. Uh, join us next week as we discuss notable orcs. I know that's a funny thing to say, but there are a few of them. <laughs> Quite right, Zektar. And for those listening, if you liked our Vox, please follow, subscribe, like, and comment. <laughs> yes. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or to send them to our website at www.asherocket.com. Now, remember, anyways, we compile these so that at the end of the month, we can answer them. Yes, that's www.ashraka.com. Indeed. And as always, <clears throat> this is Zekthar. And Yuxin, signing off. Rock!